Stand with me if you would. We're going to pray as we get into God's Word this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your Word. It is the truth. And we thank you for your Word. We thank you that your Word is being written in our heart, written in our mind this day. We thank you that you're bringing revelation to us. We thank you that we're taking hold of it, being doers of it, and we thank you it's producing fruit in our life. Thank you for all that you accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated, if you would. We've been sharing with you many messages on the subject of God's spiritual work in your life, and we're going to continue on that. And we're going to talk about the fact that you must become strong spiritually today. It is absolutely mandatory for every person to become strong spiritually, and God will do it if we do what He says. We begin in Exodus chapter 15, verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel the song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for He hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider are thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He's my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your Savior. That's the deliverer, the prosper, the victory. He'll bring forth his promises, his healing in your life. He is my God. You must make him God. You must make him first place in your life. And notice, he said, I will prepare him a habitation. God wants to come and manifest himself in you. You are to prepare him a habitation. As you get rid of all the filthiness and all the sin and all the evil spirits you cast out and you get the word in you and you set your heart, mind, soul, will, every bit of your being to walk in the ways of the Lord. He will come and he will inhabit you. You are to exalt him in everything that you do. In Psalms 46, Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Are you dealing with things that are troublesome, negative things that have occurred in your life? God is your refuge. God is your strength. And He is your help. Look unto Him. He will come to help you. He will come to minister to you. He will come to deliver you and to set you free. Therefore, will, we not, will not we fear? Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, it doesn't matter what's going on in the natural, God will bring forth His help and His victory for us. We must trust in Him. We must get our eyes upon Him. He is your help in your time of trouble, whatever the situation will be is. We see in Psalms 93, verse 1, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. He is strength, and He will manifest it. Wherewith He hath girded Himself. The world also is established, but it cannot be moved. The Lord reigns, and you have been brought into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and you are to reign with Him. You are to rule and reign over all of your enemies. And God's strength is to come into you as He comes into you and in enabling you to overcome every situation in your life. In Psalms 28. Psalms 28, we go look at verse 7. Blessed be the Lord, verse 7 that is. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in Him. You must trust in Him. He can't do things if we don't trust in Him. My heart trusteth in Him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and my song will I praise Him. The Lord is their strength, and He's the saving strength, the deliverer, the prosper, the victory of His anointed. You are anointed. You have the Spirit of Christ in you. You have the further anointing of the Holy Spirit, and through the Word of God in you, God wants you to know he is your strength, and He will bring His manifestation of His saving strength to you as you walk in His ways. You must trust in Him with your heart. Believe what He says. Do not doubt. Do not waver. Do not ever think that He will not perform His word. He is a God who will perform it, absolutely. Psalm 61. 
Verse 3. 61, that is. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. God will be a strong tower from the enemy to enable you to conquer the enemy and to have victory over him in your life. God wants you to know that the enemy does not have dominion over you. You have dominion over him. And you can conquer him in every situation, whatever has come against you. How's it going to happen? Because the Lord is going to fight the battle. Psalms 24, verse 8. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. He is going to fight your battle. The battle is the Lord's and the victory is ours. He is strong. He is mighty. He is mighty in battle. We have to put him in operation. You put him in operation as you do what he says and speak forth. Take to use the dominion that he's given unto you. As you speak it forth, he will go into operation to perform his word. Second Samuel 22, in verse 33. God is my strength. This is the word ma'uz. He's my protector, place of protection, refuge. And he's power. This is the word, another word for strength. And this means like the strength of an army when you look it up in the lexicon. The strength of like of an army. It's been translated army 56 times, the majority of the times. It's a strength like an army with you. He makes my way perfect. God is your strength, and his strength like an army will work because there's more that be with us than be with the enemy. And those are the warring angels that will go into operation, and they will fight, and they will see the enemies be smitten and put underfoot. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? No fear. We're not going to be afraid regardless of what has happened at any time in your life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? None. Fear will stop God from manifesting himself. You must resist all fear. Forms of fear would be doubt, unbelief, drawing back, wavering, wondering. No, we're not going to have any of those at all. We trust, we believe, we know he is going to bring things. When you believe, you know he is going to perform his word. He is the strength of your life. Do not be afraid of anybody or anything that the enemy can bring forth against you. God will enable you to overcome and walk in victory. Jeremiah 16, verse 19. O oh Lord, my strength, he is your strength, and my fortress, this is the one who's your refuge, my refuge, place of escape in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there's no profit. That's right. They come, but God is the source of everything. If we look to the Lord, it doesn't matter what other people are doing. They may be walking in lies. We need to look to the Lord. Your strength, your fortress, your refuge in any time, a day of affliction, which is trouble, whatever might have come against you in your life. In the midst of the judgments that are even going to come in the earth, as Joel speaks of, in Joel chapter 3, in verse 16, it says, The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. There is a great shaking that is going to come in these last days. But the Lord will be the hope of his people, and the strength of the children of Israel. This is their place of protection and safety. God is your hope. You keep your eyes on him, you trust in him, you know he is going to bring you through. He's going to roar out of Zion as he brings the judgments. Everything is going to be shaken. Do not let yourself ever get in fear. Get your eyes upon him. Now, since we see his tremendous strength, power, he's a refuge, he's our victory, he will conquer the enemies, he's mighty in battle, all these things we've seen. What's God going to, how's that going to affect us? Well, God's going to give this strength unto you. It's got to come into you because that's how God manifests himself through you as the strength comes into you. He says in Psalms 29, verse 11, see, because he's strong doesn't mean it's going to work. 
He's going to accomplish things in your life without you getting his strength in you. He's going to operate through you. Look what it says. Psalms 29, verse 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. God's going to give you strength. It's his strength coming in so you can manifest him. Remember, you're to prepare him a habitation so he can come to dwell on you, so he can manifest himself through you. And this is imperative. You are going to see victory. You've got to get his strength in you. And he says the Lord will bless his people with peace. God will bless you. He'll give strength to you. You will see victory come forth in your life. Psalms 31, verse 2. Bow down mine ear to me, deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. The Lord is your defense. He is the one who will deliver you. He will save you. He will give you victory. He'll bring you out of bondage from the situations you're in. But you've got to know he's your strong rock. You've got to look up to him. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Trust in him and his word and know that he will bring things out, out from under the bondages of the enemy. At the same time, the enemy, he's out to try to destroy you. Verse 3, Thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they've laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. The enemy lays a net to try to destroy you. Well, God is going to bring you out of that. He's going to bring you out of that. He is your strength. He is going to give you victory over your enemies. Psalms 37, verse 39. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. Notice, salvation, again, means salvation, deliverance, victory for you in your life. Who's it for? It's for the righteous. That tells you something. It just doesn't come to anybody. It only comes to the righteous. And who are the righteous? The ones who are born again with a spirit that's right before God and the ones who are doing the word of righteousness. Those who are righteous are the ones who are doing his word and they have conquered sin, which produces unrighteousness in you, so that as you are now walking in righteousness, then the salvation of the Lord will come forth in your life and he will be your strength in time of trouble and bring you through whatever would come against you. We see over in Nahum, Nahum chapter 1, verse 7, the Lord is good. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. And then he says, he knoweth them that trust in him. And that's another important point. Again, we talked about trusting him. And that's important because God knows those that trust in him. Meaning he is going to, he knows those that are really going to believe in him and they're going to be seeing God's goodness and his victory in the day of trouble or whatever the situation might be. If you're not trusting him, is he going to be able to manifest himself? No. It's not going to be able to happen. Now, as we mentioned, God's going to give strength unto you. He will strengthen you for the battle because who's going to fight the battle? In the realm of the Spirit, God's going to fight it. But who's going to put him in operation? You are. 2 Samuel 22. We see down in verse 40. Thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Your battle is a fight of faith keeping the power of God in operation, keeping the authority operation, putting your faith forth, seeing God accomplish what he purposes is you releasing him. Remember, you release him as you speak his word, act on his word with your faith, do what his word says, command or speak the promises, pray. All these things are putting him into operation when you pray his word. He's girded you with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me hast thou subdued under me. So God's going to subdue them under you, but you do have, have strength to battle. Otherwise, you're a partner in this thing. You're a party to seeing God bring forth victory in your life. We even see over in Jeremiah, chapter 51, that song that we sang today. Jeremiah 51, verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee, he's going to use you and me. Will I break in pieces the nations? With thee will I destroy the kingdoms. He will destroy the works of the enemy through you and me. You're his battle axe. You're his weapon of war. 
So God's mighty and strong, and he brings his strength into you. Why is it necessary for all this to be? Because you've got to realize what you're dealing with. The enemy also has strength. The devil has strength. The evil spirits have strength. Numbers chapter 13. This is when they went to spy out the land before they were going to go in to possess it. And here was their report when it came back. Numbers 13, verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the giants. The people were strong. They saw their, they had strength. Well, this is all a type of the evil spirits because the physical promised land is a type of the spiritual promised land, which are the promises of God that you and I go to possess. And the people that had to be dispossessed from the land are a type of the evil spirits that have to be cast out of you or the spirits operate in the heavenlies that have to be cast out of the heavenlies in order to possess the land and possess the promises in your life. So that means the devil, he's strong. In fact, of course, Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. We're well able to overcome it. And you need to believe that. You are well able to overcome everything that the enemy would bring against. Doesn't matter what's out there, it's going to face you. Now the men that went up with them said, though, be we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. That meant they didn't get their eyes on the Lord. And they also obviously didn't have the strength of God within him, them, because God gives strength unto his people. They saw the enemy and believed the enemy was stronger than them and that they could not overcome them. They didn't trust in the Lord whatsoever. The enemy has strength. You need to get strong. You need to get spiritually strong to be able to take on the enemies. In fact, David's Psalm of Thanksgiving in 2 Samuel 22, he makes this statement in verse 18. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. In the natural, you can't defeat the enemy. But in the realm of the Spirit, through God's power, with the strength of the Lord coming into you, you can conquer him. He is not stronger than you, but he is a strong enemy. God's word declares it. So anybody that tells you that, well, the devil, he can't do anything, they're lying. They're not telling you the truth whatsoever. The hospitals are full of people all bound up by the devil. The mental facilities are full of people bound up by the devil. So many things are going on with the enemy destroying people's lives. That shows he has strength. But remember, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The greater ones come into you. And you are to get spiritually strong so you can overcome. Look what it says in Psalms 59, verse 3. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. Talking about the enemies. What is the battleground? In the soul. Your will, your intellect, your emotions. Trying to work at your mind. Trying to get you to reason wrong. Try to work through Get your will not to choose the things God wants. Try to work in your emotions and get you to yield to the flesh. The mighty, which really means the ones who are strong and mighty, are gathered against me. That tells you the devils are strong, they're mighty, they're fierce. Look what they do. Look how they're operating through the people in the world even today that are violent and hateful. It's just the devil operating through them. And notice, they come at you not for your transgression nor for your sin. You could have sin in your life, and of course that gives place to them and they're coming in for sure. But you might think, well, I'm not walking in sin. Why do I have these problems coming against me? It says, not for my transgression nor for my sin. They'll come against you anyway because they come to steal, kill, and destroy regardless. Of course, if you're walking in the way of righteousness, God's your victory. He will enable you to overcome. And you will not give place to them. You'll be able to manifest the strength. But you must have the strength of God in you in order to conquer the enemies. Look what it says over in Psalms 8. Verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies. You've got to have strength because of the enemies. They have strength. 
that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger, the one who comes to come against you. You're going to, take, you're going to turn the tables on him. You're going to take vengeance against him, and you're going to drive the enemies out of your life. So the enemy is strong. Well, that means you must get spiritually strong yourself. And you are able to get spiritually strong through God coming into you. He is your source, remember. Psalms 105, verse 4. Look what it says. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. You're going to have to seek Him. You seek the Lord first. Seek His strength that will come from Him. You're not going to be able to get it without seeking Him. You've got to have your life in line with the Word of God. You've got to put Him first place in everything. You can't just seek the strength and then not really want to walk in the ways of the Lord. It doesn't work. You seek Him. You put Him first place in your life. You do what His Word says. You walk uprightly before Him. You seek His strength. You seek His face. God will bring forth that manifest in your life. We see also, says it again, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, to verse 11. Seek the Lord and His strength and seek His face continually. He wants you to be seeking Him. Remember His marvelous works that He's done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. Hey, if God's delivered one, He'll deliver all. If He's healed one, He'll heal all. If he's brought forth a miraculous work to bring you out of bondage for one, they will do it for every single one of us. You need to remember his great works and know what he will accomplish as you're seeking his strength. So you need to seek him and seek his strength. Where is it going to come from? From the Lord. It's going to come through his word. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 8. Therefore, Shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that you may be strong? Notice, what's going to cause you to be able to be strong? By keeping the commandments. What commandments do we keep in this day? We are under the New Testament. We keep the New Testament commandments of Jesus Christ. Remember, we're not under the Old Testament any longer. We do not keep the commandments of the Old Testament because they were made for man after the flesh with all of the fleshly applications. We now... Keep the commandments of Jesus Christ, which are after the Spirit, made for man after the Spirit. Now remember, when we look at all these Old Testament scriptures, people, you might, someone might think, well, why do we look at the Old Testament scriptures if we're not under it? Because you look at it from the standpoint of the types that it's pointing to, because it does give you spiritual principles that are important, applied for us in, in the New Testament era. Otherwise, you look at it all from a spiritual standpoint. As you keep the commandments of the New Testament, what's it going to do? It's going to cause you to be spiritually strong. And when you're spiritually strong, then you'll be able to go in and possess the land, which means to take possession of it. Seize, take possession, occupy the promises, the land that God's given to you, whether you go to possess it. So keeping the commandments are absolutely essential in order to see the strength of God come into you. Another thing we see, in going to possess the land, they are given some instructions from Moses. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. You've got to know that God will never fail or forsake you if you're walking in his ways, doing what he says. Fear, of course, will shut him down and give place to the enemy. Moses called unto Joshua, said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. J Joshua is a type of Jesus who went and go, leads us in to possess the promises in the New Testament. He is going to cause you to inherit it as you get strong and of a good courage and go forth and walk in the ways of the Lord. We see down in verse 23. He gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear them, and I will be with thee. You've got to know God's with you. He's with you, and he's going to manifest himself through you. Now after the, Moses had died in Joshua chapter 1, he's speaking to them as they're getting ready to go to begin to possess the land. And Joshua says to them, Verse 6, be strong and of a good courage, 
For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. You're going to be spiritually strong with good courage, no fear, and you're going to possess the inheritance that's been given to you, which are all the promises of God. Remember, Jesus is the heir of all things. You and I are joint heirs with him. We have a right to all the promises of God in our life. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. It takes strength to be able to do the word, see, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. As you get the strength in you, you're to put it in operation so it will prosper you, advance you, wherever you go, you'll possess the land. You can't be turning to the right or the left. You can't be turning any way outside of walking in line with the Word of God. The book of the law, the Word, shall not depart out of thy mouth. God wants you speaking the Word as you're speaking the promises into being. You shall meditate therein day and night, keeping it before you. That's what you want your mind thinking upon, what you're speaking and thinking and revolving around in you that you mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You will be successful. You'll be prosperous. You'll be blessed in what you're doing. If you will have the word in your mouth, meditating it, otherwise it's first place in your life, obviously, and you're a doer of it consistently. And then he comes back and he says again, in verse 9, and he says, Have not I commanded thee, He's commanded these things to us. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. God's with you. He will enable you to overcome. You must be strong and of a good courage. Now another thing. We must totally submit unto the Lord if we're going to see him manifest. Remember, he's a holy God and a righteous God. And we're to make him a habitation so he can come and manifest himself in us. He can't do anything if we're not a vessel that's clean and holy before him. In Genesis 49, 24, it speaks about how his bow abode in strength. And this refers to an abiding, enduring, continual strength. Ever-flowing strength is what it's talking about, actually, this particular word. And the arms of his hand were made strong, by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. You're going to be made strong by the mighty God who is going to come and manifest himself in your life. But of course, you've got to totally submit unto him. You've got to yield unto him. You've got to let him accomplish his work in your life. This brings us to another important point. You have a change in spirit when you got born again, you got the spirit of Jesus Christ. Your body did not get changed. Your flesh is not right. Sin dwells in it. The battle is on between the spirit and the flesh. They are contrary one to another and they war against each other. It says in 2 Samuel 3.1, Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. David was a man after God's own heart to fulfill his will. David is a type of the man after the Spirit, who is walking in the ways of the Lord. Saul was a man who was a compromiser. He's a guy who was a people pleaser. He's a guy who just did what he thought and didn't obey the commandments of the Lord. He had the kingdom taken away from him. So David was one who was obedient. Saul was one who was disobedient. David was one who typifies those who walk after the Spirit, obedience to the Word. While Saul typifies one who's not walking in obedience. He's just doing whatever he wants. He's walking after the flesh. He is not submitted to the Word of God. He's essentially walking in the flesh. What's going to happen if you walk in the flesh continue or you walk in your own ways and do what you want? You're going to get weaker and weaker spiritually. You'll get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. You go downhill. What happens though if you are doing the word consistently? You will become stronger and stronger because strength is coming into you little by little. It is a process of developing spiritual strength in your life. You are to become stronger 
and stronger. It's an ongoing process to be accomplished in your life. That's why being a consistent doer of the Word is imperative. You can't be walking one way in the Word and getting a little bit stronger and then you fall back into the flesh and you don't think it has any ramifications or effects. No, it does. You just went down. Your spiritual strength just went down. It was regardless of what you know. You may know a lot of facts in your mind. It all matters what you're doing, the fruit, the works. Remember, he says, how does he know us? By our fruit, which is evident by what we've been doing and producing, and by our works. That's our actions consistently. That's how he knows us. That shows what we're walking after. That shows our lifestyle, whether, as we talked about recently, whether we have a spiritual track record in walking in line with the Word. As you have a spiritual track record in being obedient, walking after the Spirit, you will get stronger and stronger and stronger. But if you keep yielding to the flesh, or you keep walking in the ways of the world, or keep doing your own thing, you'll get weaker and weaker, and you actually will lose the strength that you have. You'll get weaker and weaker instead, and that's what, of course, the enemy tries to do. Over in First Chronicles, chapter 28, and see it affects you. You see, as you also, as you're doing the Word, you're training yourself in those areas that it becomes your lifestyle. It's the way you do things all the time. And you'll do it consistently and you'll get stronger and stronger. But if you're not doing things consistently, you have not trained yourself in the ways of the Lord. You're kind of in and out and you're all over the place. That's why you just can't be, oh, I gotta get my faith in operation right now and then the rest of the time, your faith nowhere. No, it's a lifestyle of doing what the Word says. Notice what it says here. In 1 Chronicles 28, verse 7, Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever if, here's the condition, he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as of this day. And the word constant actually means to be strengthened. If he is strengthened to do my commandments and my judgments. And of course, if he's strengthened to do them, that shows a consistency in doing them. God expects you to be consistent in doing the Word. If you're constant, strong to do His commandments and His judgments, you're going to see the rule and the reign of God, which is the kingdom established in your life as well. <coughs> People will not rule and reign if they're not consistent and strong to do the commandments of the Lord. Remember, the devil will attack the Word and try to get the Word out of your heart. We talked about it with the parable of the sower. You've got to be ready to overcome all the temptations and attacks that come against you. In 2 Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 16 and 17, he says, After them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem. Important point. You have to set your heart to seek the Lord. Otherwise, you just don't do it when I have a problem or when I have a need or when I have time, supposedly, or when I, it fits into my schedule. That shows priorities out of line. You set your heart to seek the Lord. That is set. That's the way you live. And to sacrifice unto the Lord God, we talked about the spiritual sacrifices, that you're to be a living sacrifice, presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him, and the spiritual sacrifices that we are to be giving out of praise and worship unto Him and doing good and carrying out the things and our whole life living unto Him, essentially you and I are a sacrifice unto the Lord to carry out what He wants. That's exactly what Jesus was. And what happened when they did this? So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong three years. For three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon which meant they walked after the way of the Word. Notice, as they walked consistently, walking is step by step, isn't it? Consistently, what happened? It strengthened the kingdom. Otherwise, they set their heart to seek the Lord. They sacrificed unto Him continually. It reduced, because they were walking in the way of the Lord consistently, they got strengthened. You'll be strengthened in the rule and the reign of God. See, just because you have authority doesn't mean that you have strength that's going to enable you to rule and reign and conquer all your enemies without getting the strength of God in you as well through the Word. Strengthen the kingdom. 
You've been given authority, but you've got to get the strength of God operating as you put forth the rule and the reign of God in operation in your life. This brings us to another point. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. If you're going to see God show himself strong for you, we must have a perfect heart. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking all over the place to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. And then he says, Herein hast thou done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Why was that? That's because he wouldn't trust in the Lord. He relied on the king of Syria instead of relying on the Lord. If you rely on something else instead of relying on the Lord, God says you've done foolishly. And that's why they continually had wars. But if you will rely on the Lord and your heart will be perfect towards him because you've dealt with everything in your life that's not of him, then he'll show himself strong on your behalf. God is looking for you to have a perfect heart. A perfect heart is one who they've confessed their sins, they totally yielded unto the Lord, they're guarding their heart, they only have the word in their heart, they, don't, they got all this evil out of their heart, they conquer the areas of sin, they don't yield things in their members, because remember all your members are gates into your heart. They watch the words, otherwise you'll deceive your own heart. You're walking in the ways of the Lord. Otherwise, you're a doer of the word across the board. It will produce a perfect heart in you. What will happen then? God will show himself strong on your behalf. Here's another important point for seeing spiritual strength get established in you. 2 Chronicles 27, verse 6. So Jotham became mighty. This is the main word for strengthen in the Old Testament because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Otherwise, he became strengthened. What's interesting about this is Young brings out strengthened himself, because this is the stem is in the Hithpael, and this particular stem, Hithpael, is one that is like the middle voice in the Greek, where you're doing something for your own benefit. That's why he translates it, strengthen himself, which would be correct. So Jotham strengthened himself. Why? Because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. He's prepared. He's doing it. He's carrying it out. And so that produced the result, meaning you have a part to play in seeing the strengthening in yourself. Because who's going to prepare their ways before the Lord? You are. If you don't prepare your ways before the Lord, you're, you're not going to ever see yourself become strengthened like God wants. We must prepare our ways. That means we're ready to do the things. We've already set our schedule. We've already set our lifestyle. We've already set our agenda. We've already got our priorities in order of what we're going to do. And we're all, also ready to what we're going to do if the enemy comes and attacks. If you're not prepared... You just get blindsided by the enemy. You can get, you know, and you get blown away by attacks. In fact, you can even live above hurt if you walk in love at all times. So people don't hurt me because of the way, what they said to me, how they treated me, what, you know, the mean thing that they did. Well, that's all me, me, me reactions. If you learn to operate in the spirit and ready to forgive, ready to walk in love, ready to bless those that curse you, ready to do good to those that did evil to you, you prepared your ways, you're ready to do it, you'll never get hurt. Did Jesus get hurt and wounded and beat up? He was rejected all the time and reviled and all the different things. He didn't get blown away because he, had, he dealt, things, dealt with things properly. He had his ways prepared. We want to prepare our ways so nothing of the devil gets into us. That's how you're going to strengthen yourself. So preparing your ways, and how do you do that? You got the word in you. I'm ready to do that. The word says this, I'm ready to do it. Someone curses me, I'm ready to bless them. Someone does evil to me, I'm ready to do good to them. Someone persecutes me, and then I'm going to pray for that person. I'm going to do these things. Someone does evil to me, I'm going to forgive that person immediately. 
Otherwise, you're ready to do it. You got the word in you, you're prepared. Not only do you know things, but you're prepared to do them. Why? Because you're a con you'd be a doer of it in the past. That establishes that in your life. Being a doer is absolutely essential, and that brings us to the next point. Ezra, chapter 6, verse 3. In the first year of Cyrus, the king, the, the king, the same Cyrus, the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be builded, the place where they offered sacrifices. Let the foundations thereof be strongly laid, height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits. This is all, of course, we look at it from a spiritual standpoint, what's supposed to happen for us? Our house is to be built. We're to build the spiritual house in us. We're going to be offering up spiritual sacrifices now, praise, worship unto the Lord, doing good, reaching out, ministering to others, so forth. But also, he says, let the foundations there be strongly laid. The foundation has to be laid strongly in your life. If you don't have a strong foundation, you'll get blown away by whatever attacks come your way. We know this. From over in Matthew, chapter 7. Verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them. The guy's hearing the word. This is a present tense verb for heareth. means he's been hearing and continuing hearing. Are you hearing the word every day? That means you'd be a continual hearer. And doing them. The word doeth is also in the present tense, denoting continuous, repeated, ongoing action, what the present tense means. So are we hearing the word and then putting it in operation and doing it every day, or in every situation? If you're doing them, then the Bible says it likens you to a wise man that built his house upon a rock. You're building your spiritual house, and that's what we're supposed to do. So it cannot, it won't be moved by the attacks. Otherwise, the foundation will be strongly laid because it's been founded upon a rock. The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, beat upon that house. That's a type of the attacks of the devil that will come against you. And he's coming against you, the house of God. This is saying that you're going to have attacks. We're not insulated from attacks. You will have attacks that come against you. Jesus was tempted in all points, yet without sin. He had all kinds of attacks. He just didn't yield to them. He conquered everything and did what was right. We need to do the same thing. Notice it fell not. Why? It had been founded upon a rock. And what does this mean? This is the word, lay the foundation. The foundation had been established upon a rock. How did that happen? Hearing and doing, hearing and doing the word consistently day after day after day in your life. In the measure that you've been hearing and doing the word consistently is the measure that you have seen a foundation laid in your life for the spiritual house of God so you'll be established such that no attacks of the enemy will even be able to shake you whatsoever. And when it talks about this founded upon a rock, like we pointed this out in the past, but for you who haven't heard it, and if you had, you need to hear it again. It's a pluperfect tense verb. The pluperfect tense is a T tense in the Greek, which refers to action completed in the past. It's already been accomplished. Meaning that when the attacks came, the thing was already established. Meaning that you'd already been a consistent hearer and doer of the word. You've already got this house built. You already got this foundation laid. And the attacks come and it didn't have any effect upon you. In other words, when attack comes, Will I be able to get in the Word here and do the Word and get my house built and my foundation laid, everything, all so I can overcome the attacks? No. You're going to get blown away because this has to have already been done in the past. You know, the storm's coming. Oh, I better get my foundation laid. <laughs> it takes time to lay the foundation, doesn't it? You're going to see your house is going to get wiped out until you get the foundation laid. We need to get ourselves being a hearer and a doer. You're preparing your ways actually in doing that, and you're actually preparing yourself for the attacks that will come, because everybody's going to have attacks of some sort that will come against them at some point in time. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, he's not doing them. He's likened to the foolish man that built his house upon the sand. 
The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, beat upon the house, same attacks. Everybody gets the same attacks. The devil is our enemy, attacks everybody, just wrapped up in different packages for you and your lifestyle and to get at, get at you and your life. And beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And what's interesting is, the word was is an imperfect tense. The imperfect tense in the Greek is a ongoing tense of action, but it's in the past. It's like the present tense, which is ongoing in the present, continuous, but this is talking about something that was ongoing in the past, meaning it's looking at it from this standpoint. Great was the ongoing, continuing fall of it, down, 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 down. That's what happens to people that won't do the work. And they wonder why all, I keep on having all these bad things happening. You have not built your house. Being a hearer and a doer of the word. And you have not gotten spiritually strong. The foundation has not been laid and the devil will come and pummel you. Many Christians can't understand why these things befall me. The devil attacks everybody, remember. We have to be ready to overcome what comes. Luke 6, 46. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? I mean, God expects us to do his word consistently. Whoever comes to me, here's my saying, does him, I'd like to show you he's like. Like a man, build a house, dig this deep, laid a foundation on a rock, flood arose, stream beat vehemently upon the house, could not shake it, when it means could not, this is a word escuo, means it did not have the strength to be able to shake it, or the mighty force. Meaning the devils who has power and force and strength will not have mightier force to be able to shake you. Because what's happened? You prepared him a habitation. You prepared your ways. He's come into you through the word. You built your house. God has strengthened you with a strength that is stronger than the enemies. Could not shake it, because it was founded upon a rock. Of course, the next one, he that heareth and doeth not, like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. That can be great ruin, because people won't do the word. You need to do the word in every area of your life. It is so important. And if you don't, you'll see destruction come in that area because the devil knows your weak areas and he will be after you. You better believe it. He will come after you. Nehemiah, chapter 8. See, the devil knows you like a book. He's been watching you all your life. He's watched every single one of us. Not to be paranoid about it, just to understand that's reality in the realm of the Spirit. But God is also watching you. And if you're walking in his ways, he's in equipping you and strengthening you and empowering you to overcome everything in, in your life. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, the last part of this verse says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word strength here is the word ma'uz, the joy of the Lord. Ma'uz means a place of protection. So how do we get the joy of the Lord in us? If it's going to be our strength, give us this place of protection. Well, how does joy come to you? Joy comes, does joy come just because my circumstances are good? No. It has nothing to do with circumstances. That's happiness. Joy comes from God. Jo joy comes through the Word. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and I took them within me. And the Word was unto me the joy and rejoicing in my heart. It will produce the joy in your heart. For I am called by thy name. As you have the word in you, the joy will be there. It'll be the joy and the rejoicing of your heart. Also, what else produces the joy in your life? It's not just because of the fact that, you know, you got the word in you, but you also have to be producing results from doing the word. John 15, 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Well, how did his joy come into you and how does your joy stay full? 
because you've been keeping his commandments. That means you don't just hear this, you get your do the word. Doing the word brings his joy into you, and you're, even it says your joy will be full. What else causes your joy to be full? When you know how to pray accurately and effectively and you see the results in prayer. John 16, 23, and that day you shall ask me nothing. Jesus saying you don't pray to him about anything. Verily, verily, I say unto whatsoever you shall ask, is the word, I tell you, which means a demand of what's due you. The Father, in my name, going through the high priestly ministry of Jesus, he, the Father, will give it you. So who do we pray to? The Father, in the name of Jesus. Hitherto have I made a demand of what's due me, I tell you, nothing in my name, make a demand of what's due me, this is the word for ask, but it means in the Greek, I tell you, and you shall lambano, which means to take hold of. We've taught all this on accurate New Testament prayer, and we're not going to take the time to go through that today, but you can l read that book and re hear all that. That you shall take hold of, and what's going to happen when you take hold of the promises? That your joy may be full. As you're seeing the promises coming to pass, as you're taking hold of them, that is another thing that causes your joy to be full. Also, the more that you develop a personal, intimate fellowship of the Lord, the more that you are going to come to the place of having the joy of the Lord. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, because you've been seeking after him, his revelation of him. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Basically, a face-to-face -face relationship with God, because you're close to him. You're fellowshipping with him. You're going to be full of joy as you're walking in the ways of the Lord. God wants you to have joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You need the joy of the Lord. Many people don't have the joy of the Lord. They get down, they get depressed, they get discouraged, they get upset. They, they, they're, they're all this negativism going on. They got all these emotions over, overtaking them all the time instead of governing them. Where'd your joy go? Well, the joy went flying out the window, you know? Yeah. We need to get the joy of the Lord in us. In fact, it's quite an interesting scripture. Isaiah 12, 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I trust and not be afraid. Will trust and not be afraid. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, because God's my strength and my salvation, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. The water is that which is coming forth. That's the provision out of the well of salvation, which is coming out of the Spirit, which is on the inside of you. You're going to be drawing this out of the inside of you with joy. And how do you have the joy? Because you've been trusting in Him. He's your strength. He's your salvation. You're not afraid. You're walking in the ways of the Lord. You need the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is tied into your spiritual strength in life. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let circumstances take your joy. Get your eyes on the Lord. Now, you may be experiencing some unpleasant circumstances, so you're not happy about the situation, but you can have the joy in the midst of those as you're looking unto God to bring you out from under it, to provide for you, to heal you, to deliver you, to bring forth the victory for you in your life because the Word produces the joy in you. You can have joy in the midst of unpleasant situations. See, when all the bad stuff happens, when all the judgments start happening in the earth, I mean, it's not going to be pleasant. And if you lose your joy, you're going to be in trouble. You need to be, have your eyes on the Lord and rejoicing in Him regardless of what's going on. We need to live above our circumstances. In fact, the word that came forth was today about we operate in faith and not, oper not letting ourselves be over overcome by the circumstances. If you look at your circumstances, you're going to be in trouble, and you certainly won't be manifesting the strength of the Lord. Another thing that's important, if you're going to have spiritual strength, Psalms 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord. This word wait here, is a word which means to have a hope or an expectancy. 
Wait with an expectancy, not wait to see if maybe he'll do something and maybe he won't. No, it's an expectancy. Con like the word el peace in the New Testament, a confident expectancy. So we have a confident expectancy on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait on the Lord. Expect of him, from him, I say, on the Lord. So you'd have to have hope, confident expectancy, know what God will do. You got his promise, you got his word, be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart. You need strength in your heart to take hold of promises, to be able to conquer attacks coming against you. If your heart's weak, you're going to get blown away because you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth. If your heart's, heart's all beat up, you're going to have a lot of problems. God wants us to have hope and confident expectancy of what he will do. There's another scripture that goes along with that. You can't have hopelessness. Don't ever let yourself get hopeless. Psalms 31, 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. You're going to ha have confident expectancy. God is coming on the scene to deliver you, to heal you, to prosper you, to give you wisdom, to give you answers, to bless you, to show you what to do, to lead you, guide you, whatever it might be. He's going to manifest himself for you. Your eyes are upon him. And you're looking for him to manifest his great strength in you. Psalms 59, verse 9, Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. Otherwise, it's God's strength. I'm looking for God's strength to come into me, to manifest in my life. And then we come down to verse 16 in this chapter. I will sing of thy strength, it's the word ooze, which means might or strength. Yea, I will sing aloud of the mercy in the morning. Mercy is the love of God in action to minister to your needs. That includes healing. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Sing of the strength of the Lord. Sing aloud of the mercy of God. Taking hold of the mercy of God. Don't forsake the mercy like that's what Jonah almost did. Ah, he said, if, hey, if, if I observe this situation, I'm going to forsake the mercy of God and I won't see myself get out of this. So he declared he had to repent, salvation to the Lord. Of course, he did repent and began to sacrifice unto the Lord and God delivered him out, vomited him out on the dry land. <coughs> unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. God is a God of might and power and strength, and he will manifest himself for you. Another thing that we need to do, Psalms 138, verse 3. The strength of God is to come into you. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me, and strengthen me with strength in my soul. Now that's another important point. You get strength in your heart but you also need strength in your soul. Remember where the word's written? It's written in your heart. It's also written in your mind, isn't it? Affecting your soul. You need your strength in your soul so your mind doesn't just cave in to an attack or your will throw in the towel or your emotions overwhelm you and engulf you and, and take control. Your soul needs to be steadfast, remember, or to be steadfast in the soulless realm in order to, we need to possess our soul so that we will not give place to anything, any of the attacks that are trying to take us out of hope. Remember, the devil is waiting for your soul. He knows that if he can get you out of hope, your faith can't do anything because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Without hope, your faith does nothing. You must have a hope, which a confident expectancy, and you must have strength in your soul, regardless of what the circumstances are. Strengthen your soul to deal successfully with what is going for, coming forth and what's happening in your life. Proverbs chapter 10 tells us another thing it's important for to have spiritual strength. Proverbs 10, 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction will be to the workers of iniquity, the ones that walk in the ways that contrary to the word. That means if you're walking in sin, you're walking in the world, you're walking in the flesh, you're going to see all kinds of destruction. 
The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. So walking in his way, that's his word, consistently is the key to the upright. And this is someone who's upright, and this is the word actually that refers to integrity. It's like integrity in your spiritual life, uprightness of heart certainly. You have spiritual integrity before the Lord because you're walking in the way of the Lord. You're obeying the word. You're doing exactly what he tells you to do. And he is going to then bring forth his strength in your life. Another thing that's important is having the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 14, 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence because you're going to have to have a confidence in him. So the fear of the Lord, which is to hate evil, the fear of the Lord remembers the beginning of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You delight greatly in the commandments of the Lord. You have the fear of the Lord before you. When you have the fear of the Lord, you'll hate evil and you'll turn away from it. All these things are important in order to have a strong confidence before the Lord. Otherwise, you can't manufacture strong confidence. It comes because of doing what the Word says and having the Word established in you, including having the fear of the Lord before you. So you'll hate evil. You won't even touch that area of sin. You stay away from it. You will not allow yourself to be involved in any kind of iniquity. You won't yield to anything that's not of the Lord. Because you have the fear of God. You know, God says, what's the whole duty of man? Fear God and keep His commandments, as it says in Ecclesiastes. We need to do that. To have strong confidence in the Lord. You can't manufacture it as well, remember. It comes from God. Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. You call upon the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is like a strong tower. He'll manifest himself. When you call on the name of Jesus, the righteous will run into it. It's for the righteous. And they'll be safe. They'll be high, as it really means, exalted. They'll be protected, set on high. Uh, probably a good way to understand that is Young's brings out. You'll be set on high. You'll be able to overcome and conquer the situations that come against you. Another thing that's important if you're going to have spiritual strength, wisdom, and knowledge. Proverbs 24, verse 5. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge increases strength. You need to get wisdom. Proverbs says, get wisdom. It's the principal thing. How do you get wisdom? By hearing and doing the word. Remember the guy that's a wise, wise, he, he built his house on the rock. He's instead of the foolish guy, he's a hearing and a doer of the word. Wisdom comes by you hearing and doing the word consistently. A man, a man of knowledge. And of course, how, where are you going to get the means to produce this wisdom from the knowledge of God. That's why a man of knowledge will increase strength and power. He's going to increase this. The more you get the strength of God into you through the Word, and then you put it in operation through wisdom, hearing and doing it, it'll produce that strength in your life. Mighty strength. But we do have to look at verse 10. If thou faint, faint in the day of adversity... Thy strength is small. That means that your strength has nothing to do with just knowledge. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's having applied the word, doing it consistently. That's how you get wisdom. Wisdom's, wisdom produces the strength because you're here and a doer of the word. But if you faint in the day of adversity, we obviously weren't too strong in hearing and doing the word. We drew back. That means your strength is small. Because if you had the spiritual strength that was strong in you, you wouldn't faint in the day of adversity. The reason you fainted is the devil got to you and blew, got you off the word somehow. You got looking at the circumstances. You drew back. You quit using your faith. You, you got discouraged. You got disappointed. You got some kind of negative got to you in some way. You fainted. No, nope, we can't allow that. God wants us to be doing what he says. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 7, verse 19. Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. 
You want to get strength, get strength? Keep hearing and doing the word and getting wisdom imparted to you by the Lord. Wisdom will strengthen the wise because you want to get wisdom and more wisdom and more wisdom because the more wisdom you have, the more it's strengthening you. That's what you want to see come forth. Another thing that's important is you do have to stay away from things that will sap your strength or take it away or bring you down or set you up for the enemy to destroy you. Isaiah 8.11 is quite a statement. For the Lord thus spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. God does not want you walking in the way of anything any person, any organization, whatever it might be, that's not putting the Word of God first place. You're going to be contaminated. Everything of the world is going to contaminate you. That's why we separate ourselves from the things of this world. So like Paul says, I want to know Jesus and Him crucified. I always want to know the ways of the Lord. I want to know everything about Him. I'm not going to walk in the way of the people of the world. I'm not going to walk in the way of people that are not following the Word of God. I'm not going to allow myself to be around and in fellowship with people that are not walking in the way of the Lord. In fact, God, with a strong hand, said, don't do it. I mean, it's, you know, with a strong hand, I mean, I'm instructing you, do not walk in the way with these people. That tells you what's going to happen. It's going to contaminate you. You're going to get a transfer of spirits. It's going to affect you adversely. You can't be around those kind. If you think it's not going to affect you, you're kidding yourself. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Remember that scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 33? It'll corrupt you. You will have a transfer of spirits that will affect you. You're not the people with, be with people who do not speak, hear, do, walk, and lie with the word. That's a strong, uh, it's amazing how people just won't listen to this scripture and do what God says. Great great mistake. And they wonder why they're, they're not strong. They're contaminated. That's why. Isaiah 26, verse 1. In that day shall the song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Strong city. See, that's what he's building in you. You're the city of God. He's building a strong city in you, just like a strong house. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Otherwise, as you're getting delivered, as you're getting prospered, as you're seeing the salvation of the Lord, the victories come forth, it's building your house, it's building your walls, it's building your bul bulwarks. In other words, the more that you're seeing God accomplish His work and you're working out your own salvation by obedience continually, it producing a strong city, you're building the walls in your spiritual house, in your spiritual city. That's why you need to be busy doing these things every day in your life. <clears throat> One last scripture before we stop for this morning. Isaiah 35, verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands. Confirm, which also means to be strong, strengthen the feeble knees, as Young brings it out. So you strengthen the weak areas, strengthen something that's weak. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold your, your God, <clears throat> behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. I mean, he's going to pay back the enemy. He will come and save you, heal you, deliver you, give you victory, overcome. If you had an attack from the enemy, God will come, back, come with a recompense, pay back. And he's going to come and he's going to save you and heal you. He's going to come with vengeance against your enemy. Remember, he's the God of vengeance. He will conquer your enemies. Don't be afraid. Be strong. And remember, this means also the weak areas have to be strengthened in your life. you got to, you know, the devil will exploit all those weak areas. He knows your weaknesses. He knows the buttons he can push in your life. If he can do that successfully, get you into anger, get you upset, get you frustrated, get you yelling, getting you bitter, getting you depressed, getting you, you know, into some kind of worldly thing that's no good, getting you falling for something that you shouldn't be involved in and you know it, it's, he's going to take you down. Be strong, fear not. God will come with a vengeance. 
He will come with a recompense. He will come and save you. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation, that it is imperative that I become spiritually strong in my life. The Lord is my strength. He is my source. He is my help in time of trouble. His strength is given unto me when I meet the conditions. I must have His strength because the enemy lays a net to try to trap me and he lies in wait for my soul. I also must be strong because the enemy is strong. I must have strength so I can conquer the enemy. I will seek the Lord. I will seek his strength. I will keep his commandments. <clears throat> I will be strong and of good courage. I will not have any fear or be dismayed. I know the Lord is the strength of my life. I will walk in the Spirit, doing the Word. I will get stronger and stronger. I will not allow myself to walk in the flesh or in sin, or I will get weaker and weaker. I will do the commandments of the New Testament and become stronger. I will set my heart to seek the Lord. I will be a spiritual sacrifice unto the Lord. I will walk in all of His ways. I will have a heart, a perfect heart. I will prepare my ways before the Lord. I will hear and do the Word. So the foundation is strongly laid in my life. And I will see the strength of God coming into me. I will have confident expectancy and hope for the Lord to bring forth victory. I will have the joy of the Lord because of the Word and me walking in His commandments and seeing the results in prayer and having a personal face-to-face -face relationship developed with the Lord. I will walk in your ways uprightly and I will see the strength of the Lord. I will have the fear of the Lord. I will rely on the name of the Lord. I will get wisdom and continual knowledge. As I have wisdom and knowledge, I will be strengthened. I will not walk in the way of any people who are not walking in line with the Word of God. If they don't speak, hear, do, walk in the Word, put the Word forth in what they do, I will have nothing to do with them. God spoke with a strong hand, saying that I should not walk in the way of this people. I will be wise and do what the Word says. And I understand, if I faint in the day of adversity, my strength is small. But I will build a strong city in me as I work out my salvation. The more I get delivered and healed and conquer the enemies and gain victory and bring forth fruit, the stronger I will be. I thank you. All weak areas in my life, they will be dealt with. I will strengthen every area. I will get all fear out. I know that God will come with a vengeance, with a recompense. He will come and save me, deliver me and heal me, and set me free. I will be strengthened with the strength of God, and I will become spiritually strong in my life so I can walk in victory. I prepare Him habitation. I prepare him to manifest himself in my life. I will have the strength of God dwelling in me and manifesting in me and manifesting through me as I'm a hearer and a doer of this word. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Praise God. I believe this is an important message because if you don't have spiritual strength, you're going to get blown away by the devil left and right. And even though you know, I know God's strong and mighty and he can do it, it's not going to get done if he doesn't come into you. It has to come into you. That's why he tells us and commands us to be strong and of a good courage. He commands us to get strengthened. So otherwise, God, who is mighty and strong, when he comes into you and manifests himself, it's going to be all over for the enemy. The enemy is going to be defeated. And you're going to see victory come forth in your life. We've talked about this the first part of it. We've got a lot more to talk about, going through many more scriptures in the Old Testament and then going through New Testament scriptures. We'll be doing that tonight as we talk on the second part of this, of becoming strong spiritually. Father, we thank you for all that you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of this word, and we will see spiritual strength come forth continually in our life, and we will walk in victory. Thank you for all that you accomplish as we're hearers and doers of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.